Koalas are so cute and so cuddly, but in most places in the world, you actually can't cuddle them. But here, Jazz, we can. You can, yes. One of the very unique opportunities that we allow our guests as they come to the zoo. So she likes to be cuddled? She does, yes. Do you want to have a go? Of course. All right. Good girl. All right, so it's really, really easy. It's basically like holding a baby that's got nails. There you go. Oh, yeah. She's sweet. She is. Feels like a little baby. It does. Feels like a teddy bear with batteries. She's precious. She is. Is it yes. possible for, for me to take her home? No, you wouldn't get far. <laughs> <laughs> I've got incredibly long legs. But you can't come to the zoo in Australia and not hang out with the kangaroos. It is by far one of the, um, the most popular aspects of the zoo is coming to see these Aussie icons. I didn't think they'd let us get this close. They're incredibly friendly, very, very relaxed, just like the rest of us locals. They're pretty chilled out. This bird kind of scares me, the cassowary. Probably the most dangerous bird in the world, am I right? Potentially, yeah. Basically, they run at you, they can run up to about 60 kilometers an hour, and they'll run at you and strike with either their chest and, uh, and or their foot. Now there's a baby around that we can actually Kind of get close to? Yeah, we can get close to him. He's not, not so much a baby anymore, more of a sub-adult, but um, we can still get quite close to him, yeah. Before we do go in there, um, I just wanted to let you know that we were in there before. He might be a little bit nervous, so um, if he does start to show any signs, we'll just jump straight out. I'll just follow you. Sure. <laughs> I don't know what those signs might be. <laughs> it's kind of like getting in the swamp with the crocodile right now kind of what that's like. Here you come. You guys are right. If you just stay there, he'll be okay. No sudden moves. Our next zoo adventure, the crocodiles. Throughout the world, guys, we have 23 species of crocodilian. Now here in Australia, guys, we are lucky enough to have two of those species. Those bumps along his back there basically help to break up the surface tension of the water, allowing these animals to be a mere 15, 20 centimetres below the surface and move right up into position. Now you might see if we can get the big fella out for you today, guys, so you can uh, have a bit of a better look at him. There we go. Look at that. What a lovely smile. What a special day. Thank you, Jazz. This was awesome. We do have one last surprise, oh. one, um, one character who would love to have a cuddle with you. Bring it on. Come on over, honey. Hey. What an amazing hands-on experience here at the Cairns Tropical Zoo. We're in one of my favorite city neighborhoods, The Rocks, for a tour with Bonza Bike Tours. So I've ridden a bike before, so I know how to ride a bike. Yep. I know how to put the helmet on, yep. but I don't know where we're going. Okay, well where we're going today is we're going to start down in Circular Quay. We go up to Observatory Hill. You can see a whole bunch of Sydney from there before the bridge was built. It actually had a 360 degree view. Lovely. There. Are we going to get a workout in? Uh, so you certainly are. It's easy. It's something that everyone can do. Let's do it. Let's do it. Alrighty. So we're here in Circular Quay, which is where the tour starts. It's also the place where Sydney started, pretty much, so it's kind of really appropriate. This is cool, though. I've seen the ships down here in Circular Quay. They're amazing. They're different one every day. What a view, man. This is awesome. This is what you guys call art here? I was say, well, it's what some people call art. <laughs> <laughs> We've, uh... I like it. We're here in a place called Walsh Bay. Uh, what we can see over here is something called Blues Point Tower, which is what some people say is the ugliest building in Sydney, but unfortunately it got heritage listed. Really? So gonna change, yeah. Why would it be heritage listed? Uh, because it was one of the oldest ones here. So they built it, the government bought it, and it stuck around long enough.
I've noticed, Kat, that Sydney is a very <laughs> so, fit city as the people just like went to, by. Uh, it takes a little bit of work to maintain the reputation, but... What's the reputation? Of, of a good-looking country. <laughs> it's very... <laughs> everybody's in good shape here. I love it. Here we are at Observatory Hill. As you can see, there's a fair bit to observe. There's a lot to observe. <laughs> there's a lot to observe. As you can see, there's a pretty good view. And we return. We Kat, thanks for the tour. No worries, we got you back safe and sound. We love your city, man. <laughs>In its short lifetime, the Sydney Opera House has earned a reputation as a world-class performing arts centre and has become a true symbol of Sydney and the Australian nation. The Sydney Opera House is a beautiful structure known throughout the world. Alex is our tour guide today. Hello. I've always wanted to come here. The Sydney Opera House, it was officially opened by Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II in October of 1973. And in that time, the Sydney Opera House has become one of the most visited sites in Australia. The Sydney Opera House has a global recognition factor of around four billion people. Wow. That equates to roughly two out of every three people on the face of the earth, they recognise the iconic shape of the Sydney Opera House. It's amazing, people get truly overwhelmed walking through this space. I bet especially architects. Architects, they take an architects around, they just want to come and sit here and go, oh, <laughs> baby. Okay, so obviously we got concrete on the inside, but Indeed. on the outside is not. Well, the whole roof is covered in ceramic roof tiles from Sweden. There is 1,056,006 individual roof tiles that cover the whole Sydney Opera House. Now, instead of climbing up and individually placing each tile, one after the other, up to a million, 56,006, they tiled each one of those panels or lids down on the ground. Then they used a big crane, picked up each individual panel section and locked it into position. What's, what's the message to our viewers? I mean, obviously it's a beautiful structure, but why should people come to the Sydney Opera House? I thought the Sydney Opera House was just for opera and just for classical music. But coming to the Sydney Opera House, it's places to eat, great views all the way around and inside, but it's not just opera that they do here. It's rock concerts, films, talk, avant-garde theatre, cabaret, burlesque, rock shows, a little bit of something for everyone. Well, you've been an awesome tour guide. Thank, Thank you, Alex. Pleasure Thank to you. meet you. Thank you. One of the most thrilling things you can do here is climb the Sydney Harbour Bridge. Next stop, the top. Welcome to the Sydney Harbour Bridge. What I'd like to do is to grab your latch, take it off the hook. We will be attaching it to our static line. That'll be on our right hand side. So are we ready for action? Yes. Let's go, let's do it. First part of the bridge here, southern approach span roughly 300 metres long. Well, here we are coming over George Street. It's the oldest street in the country in actual fact. Is it really? That's quite a climb. <laughs> Brilliant. That's a fun little climb right there, straight up. Everybody gets the same thrill that you do on the bridge, uh, Chano. And you get to do it several times a day. We do. We, do we, we get to do it up to three times a day. You've got to be fit and ready to go as a climb leader. You're looking fit, man. <laughs> <laughs> so what's that little fort-like thing over there? Well, I'm glad you asked that, Jono, because that, that's our main means of defence in Sydney. <laughs> fort Denison, roughly 155 years of age, so the little island that that fort sits on, which is known as Pinchgut, was literally the top of the island was quarried away to a shelf so they could build the fort there that we see today.
see lots of other people climbing the bridge. How many people come through this every day? A record-breaking day. We'll see 1,800 people and uh, big numbers. It's the thing you've got to do when you come to Sydney, as you can see, Jono. You've got views of the whole of Greater Sydney, right out to those Blue Mountains, right down to the Southern Highlands, out to the Tasman Sea, part of the South Pacific. Well, this was a spectacular day. I won't forget this. You were an awesome tour guide. You didn't disappoint, so thank you, Dean. Thanks, Jono. It's been great to have you on board. Guys, how, how good, good is this? this? Today I get to check something off my bucket list. After a scenic boat tour from Port Douglas, we're smack dab in the middle of the world famous Great Barrier Reef. Alrighty guys, we're gonna go on this semi-submersible here. What it does, it takes you around the reef for about 25 minutes. See a lot of those bigger creatures out there, sharks, turtles. It's quite, quite a bit more unique. Uh, way of viewing the reef, that's for sure. This is cool. Yeah. Look, the Great Barrier Reef, you're actually looking at about 350,000 square kilometres. There's hundreds of different types of fish. And I'm really impressed with these little, like, look like stick like features. They're called staghorn coral, the branchy ones. But the reason why they're different in colour, it comes down to an organism called Zooxanthellae. There's just amazing colours in this reef. Sunlight does depend as well. What we tend to find when it comes to trying to figure out the names of these corals and fish is what they, what they look like is what they're called. What are these ones here? These guys here are called scissor tail sergeant majors. I call them zebrafish. Zebrafish <laughs> is another one. That's the more common name. Is it really? Yeah, it is, it is. I've been here for the last two and a half years and there's always still something new to see every day. Oh yeah, you it's, never see the same thing. Oh, quite. no way. Yeah, no, it's amazing. You can also see this swaying coral on our left here. Spaghetti coral. Spaghetti coral, yeah. Spaghetti coral. It looks like spaghetti. Yeah, you can relate to that. It's one of our soft corals. Luke, that was great. Thanks, mate. Oh, mate, I'm glad you enjoyed it. No worries. Who's up for some snorkeling? This guy. Snorkel the Great Barrier Reef. We've seen the reef from underneath the water, now it's time to get a bird's eye view. What a day, what a day. Harry, you guys at Quicksilver have uh, set the bar pretty high. Certainly a pleasant place to work and a pleasant place to visit as well. Oh my god, the Great Barrier Reef. The reef itself made up of about 2,900 separate reefs, along with sand caves and islands, stretches to 1,500 miles along the Queensland coast. It's spectacular. The Great Barrier Reef is one of the seven wonders of the world, and for good reason. Wow. Music and culture go hand in hand, especially today at the Jabagai Aboriginal Cultural Park. Well, we started 25 years ago in a little sleepy little village in Coranda, and uh, here we are 25 years later. The message is loud and clear. We want people to be educated about Australia, and we're more to Australia than just blonded surf boys, kangaroos and Vegemite. <laughs> We've got a living culture here that's been going for countless generations and we're very proud of that. Today I'm going to learn how to throw a boomerang, I'm going to learn how to toss a spear. Good. Well, what do you call a boomerang that doesn't come back? A, a boomer gone? No, we call it a stick. A stick? <laughs> That's good. 
Time to learn how to throw the boomerang. It seems rather simple, but I doubt it is. Zach, yeah. how do we do this? All right, so these are used for hunting pretty much. They're used for big flocks of birds, curving around, making tight circles. All right, so we've got the curve side. That's for the aerodynamics, and the flat side. So you tilt it like this when you throw it? Like yeah. This? So on a tilt. Okay. So it'll catch the wind and push it back to you. Okay. That did not work. Let's try it again. Ah, sorry, I'll try it. I, I need to go up. Left for you. <laughs> right in front of my <laughs> That was fun, the boomerang. Yeah. I like it. I kind of got the hang of it. So we're gonna learn how to throw the spear? Yep. What's the key? Uh, pretty much follow through, like a tennis serve. I can do that. I can yep. play tennis. Easy. So before we uh, learn how to play the didgeridoo, let's talk a little bit about this. We saw this earlier in the performance. It's such, such a beautiful instrument, Colin. First step is the vibration of your lips. Rather. You're going to actually pull, push up against your lip, so it's actually tight, so no hair is coming. There we go. Yep, right. You know what? I think we'll let the master do it. Take it away, Cullen.